are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS podcast listeners. This episode is all about topics and answers. Specifically, we're going to focus on technology topics. Now, if this is not a strong topic for you, then if it comes up on the exam and you get a question on technology, then it's going to be even more difficult. So, if you know that you don't really like this topic, that you're not very strong on this topic, that it doesn't really interest you, then that's even more reason to research it. And when I mean research, I mean maybe change your daily morning habit and start going to techcrunch.com or wired.com or even just start exploring the futurism and technology sections of BBC, um, of the BBC website. This way you're just going to get to grips with technology. And another great way to improve your knowledge regarding technology is to listen to this podcast. Now, if you really want to improve your idea generation abilities, and this is a specific exam skill that is needed for the exam, I've said this uh, quite a few times, because what you're going to hear in this podcast is basically my idea generation skill, and I've developed this, um, I've developed this just through practice, just by answering lots and lots of questions. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to answer between four and five questions. Um, So let's go. Do you think that technological advancement has brought more harm than good? Use specific reasons and details to support your answer. Personally, I think if you get something like that, it's quite easy. It's basically technology, good or bad. Um, Hopefully, you may pause the recording now, pause the podcast, the tutorial, and maybe just jot down a few ideas. Write down a few ideas. What comes to mind? Technology. Okay, we can maybe, uh, technological advancement. It's brought more harm than good. All right, I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to say um, I strongly disagree. And I think technology has brought more... um, Or the benefits of technology outweigh the disadvantages. Um, We can just look to the medical sector. Okay, we can say that life uh, expectancy, a very good collocation there, life expectancy is at its highest ever and one of the main reasons is because of technology um, and this can range from the ability to do blood tests uh, to diagnose problems quickly to di- diagnose can- um, diseases illnesses uh, rapidly um, so those would be like my examples and then maybe in the next paragraph I would say um, another reason why technology advancement is beneficial for society Um, and also notice that I've said beneficial rather than repeating the question which is doing more harm than good I'm saying it's beneficial the other reason it's beneficial for society is because um, our living standards have improved we can call We can talk to family members across the other side of the globe in an instant or with a click of a button, whatever. Um, We can visit, um, or we could say distances have been cut. In the past, it took six months to reach a destination such as Australia, traveling from the UK. Nowadays, it takes between 18 to 24 hours. Okay, Um, so there are two solid reasons. Those are my two solid reasons those are my paragraphs um, then from there we're going to do the introduction uh, write the paragraph one write paragraph two and then the conclusion job done move up let's move on question two what technologies did you use to help 
you in your studies. Describe how it has helped you. Um, use specific reasons and details to support your answers. Good. Okay, very easy. I'm going to go for four paragraphs. Intro, introduction, paragraph one, my reason or paragraph body paragraph one will be technology I used my laptop okay um, I used my laptop how did it help me um, I used let's see it helped me take notes organize essays and um, collaborate with other students can you see that I'm looking for better than normal vocabulary. Collaborate is a very good example. Okay, so that's paragraph one, my laptop. Paragraph two, I'm just gonna go for mobile phone because nothing else comes to mind right now. And as I've said a million times before, it's not the quality of the idea. Okay, the, quality, the idea just has to be reasonable. Um, so I'm gonna say mobile phone because I could, um, catch up on classes that I had missed via messaging my, uh, my colleagues and student friends. Um, I could also record numerous lectures and furthermore, I could research for assignments while commuting to university. I tried to emphasize the special vocabulary um, that would help me get points in that essay. Okay, um, res uh, research, commuting, assignments, this kind of vocabulary is specific um, for studies, for technology. Um, there we go, two paragraphs, job done. And then I conclude in the final paragraph. Let's move on to question three. Pause this after you've listened to it and give it a shot. Why not? With the latest technological advancements, dating is now possible online. Would you recommend online dating for your single friends? What are the advantages and disadvantages of online dating? Uh, cite some examples to support your answers. Uh, support your answer. Okay, so the question here. Um, We've got kind of two questions. So to make sure that we are going to get full points for task response, which we will, just break it down and slow down. So would you recommend online dating for your single friends? Paragraph one. What are the advantages and disadvantages of online dating? Maybe we could do two paragraphs there. One for the advantages, one for the disadvantages. But let's just not over complicate this because personally I think three solid cohesive paragraphs, body paragraphs, um, can be a bit of a challenge. So I always aim for just doing two good strong body paragraphs. So let's go. Um, the other reason why I avoid doing three body paragraphs is because you haven't got that much time a third body paragraph, or if you're doing three body paragraphs, I personally don't think there's enough opportunity to um, coherently introduce and introduce, state and support your argument and even conclude your argument. So, but if we just stick to two body paragraphs, then we've got ample space. Anyway, let's get cracking. Would you recommend online dating for your single friends? I definitely would because it saves time. Um, it increases the amount of people you can evaluate. Um, and let's see. And you can meet interesting new people outside of your social circles. Better vocabulary than normal, okay? So that's my argument for body paragraph one. Let's see. 
Um, what are the dis advantages and disadvantages of online dating? Now, because I said I'm just going to do two body paragraphs, and basically there's two questions in here, and I've already used one body paragraph. For my second body paragraph, I want to squeeze in the advantages and disadvantages. So what I'm going to do here is just very briefly mention the disadvantages um, so as to acknowledge the question. Um, but then I'm just going to go straight into the advantages and build my arguments around the advantages because it's more coherent. I've already said that I would recommend it to my friends, my single friends. So now if I just go wholeheartedly into the disadvantages, it's going to make my whole essay a little bit incoherent. Yeah. So I'd be like, hey, Peter, yeah, you should really try Tinder. <laughs> then my next paragraph is like, whoa, uh, the disadvantages are that you can meet some real weirdos. You don't even know the person. Uh, the photos can be manipulated. Uh, the person can turn out to be pff, a complete disaster and nervous, um, a complete disaster with no social skills. Um, and this was never conveyed via the app, blah, blah, blah. So if I did that, it's really incoherent. So obviously I'm going to jump in and I'm going to see the advantages. So let's go to, back to the advantages. But no, we'll go back to the paragraph and we will say, um, um, although there are serious disadvantages or serious drawbacks, let's use synonyms, although they are, there are serious drawbacks, such as the potential dangers and uh, what could be the other drawback um, and possibly the lack of a real connection between the person, between the two candidates or the, between the two dating individuals. Um, nevertheless, um, the advantages such as saving time and um, increasing the possibility of meeting somebody outside your social circles vastly outweigh the aforementioned drawbacks. I would have to think about how to put that into a little bit more, how to write that a little bit more succinctly. But basically what I'm saying is that I'm going to acknowledge there are a few drawbacks, then briefly mention the advantages and then build my paragraph by going into more detail of the advantages. Um, let's see, so I said we can ba basically meet more people via dating online. For example, um, in Tinder, I can evaluate over a hundred people per minute. <laughs> no, in Tinder, I can evaluate over 30 people per minute, um, whereas in a bat, whereas with traditional dating, it may take me a whole week to evaluate 30 people. Okay? Yeah, I, and as I've said before, I don't totally agree with my answers. These are just logical, reasonable, and um, average, normal answers, which can be backed up either way. So there, and as I just said, we're just going back to the question, cite some examples to support your answer. My example of Tinder there was perfect. Let's move on. We spent too much time on online dating. <laughs> In the developed world, techn technological progress is increasing. What problems will this cause for individuals and society? Suggest some measures that could be taken to reduce the impact of radical technological advancements. Hmm, quite a... It's a loaded question, you know, there's like some information there that we just do not want to miss. So what problems will this cause for individuals and society? What problems are we referring to? Technological progress, suggestion method, measures. Okay, so reviewing that question, I know that in paragraph one, I've got to talk about the problems technological progress is causing in the developed world. Okay, I can't be talking about Namibia or Cameroon or I don't know Cambodia wherever. I've got to be focused on the developed world. Um, 
next body paragraph suggests some measures, problem and solution, basically. So let's go. Um, what are some of the problems in the developed world? First of all, problems. Um, okay, let's see. A mobile phone addiction. This is a possible problem for the developed world. Um, what are the causes and in what problems will this cause for individuals and society? Okay, so body paragraph one, mobile phone um, addiction is causing um, individuals or people to become less sociable. Um, this is leading to a fragmented society. Okay, uh, there aren't many synonyms for society. So I'll just use some of society. Uh, so fragmented society. And then I'm going to just build this up, build my argument, support my argument. And I'll just say, um, this can be seen with, let's see. Um, uh, this can be seen because nowadays um, people are clearly talking less between each other, um, especially in the family. Um, for example, it is not uncommon to see a family dinner uh, where each mem which, where each family member is communicating on the mobile phone on their mobile phones rather than with each other. Okay, um, perhaps this may cause serious problems for society if the trend is allowed to uh, grow, uh, continue and grow. Okay, suggest some measures. Okay, um, to reduce the impact of radical technological advancements. Hmm. Let's see. Um, so, body paragraph number two would be suggesting measures. The measures that could be taken. Um, government phone could. Uh, sorry, government. Governments could legislate to reduce the amount of mobile phone time. It's not the best argument, but like I said, it's not really that much the quality of the idea. So governments could limit the amount of mobile phone t time permitted. Um, families could prohibit mobile phones at the dinner table. Um, schools could also restrict mobile phones from entering into campuses uh, into the school place wherever into school grounds okay um, and then we just say this would most likely increase personal interaction and communication um, and perhaps prevent the impact of um, smartphones or the negative impact of smartphones in today's society. Okay, there we go. Body paragraph one and two. Let's move on to the final question. We're almost finished. Let's see. At the present time, artificial intelligence of some technologies is advancing rapidly, especially in the driving sector. Do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? Okay, you've probably heard me say this a few times. Let's just take a position. What position am I going to say? I'm going to say that the advantages do outweigh the disadvantages, um, i.e. there are more advantages to this. Um, let's see. So body paragraph one. There are advantages because people um, in the transport sector no longer have to work in dangerous environments um, if they are replaced by an AI computer. For example, 0.3% um, of people die driving trucks every year. 0.3% uh, of truck drivers end up with a serious fatality before retiring. Something like that. Okay, so argument one, it's safer um, for the transport, for the people working in transports. Um, Number two, it's more cost effective uh, because there's no longer a wage that has to be paid. Um, so in theory, the costs of 
the costs associated with the transport sector would inevitably fall. And then um, I would just say the I would acknowledge the disadvantages in the conclusion. I'd say, although it may lead to a loss of jobs, these um, advantages, such as uh, these advantages in these advances in safety and uh, cost reductions in economy, yeah, these advances in safety and economy, undoubtedly are stronger than the disadvantages. Yeah? Um, and also note how I avoided using outweigh. I wanted to say are stronger because I can't use outweigh because it was used in the question and I wouldn't get that many points. So there we go. We've got five beautiful <laughs> um, plans there. And if you really wanted to take this to the next level, what you could do is probably listen it, to it again and write down notes and use my ideas to construct your essay. Write down the question and then write down your essay. And you can, um, let's see, you could possibly send that in for a correction to ielspodcast.com or you could give it to your teacher for correction. Um, and then what you would be doing is just practicing organizing your essay and if you do have difficulty organizing your thoughts organizing your paragraphs then have a look at the online course pretty certain it will help you there's a whole chapter all about that um, and like a student said the other day she said she she knew how to write the essay just from reading all these online uh, blogs and tutorials, but she didn't know what to write. And that was quite interesting. And that kind of inspired me to do a few more of these episodes. So hope I hope everything is going well. Um, check out the course, check out the site, sign up for the email list, and all the best. And remember... Every day that passes and every preparation and every session that you do, uh, preparing for IELTS just makes, just gets you closer to your goal. So keep going. All the best and have a great day. Yeah.